Okay, here I'm going to go over how to weigh objects, which might seem rudimentary. And I'm not going to focus on triple beam balance. We're going to focus more on a digital balance, which might seem easier, uh, but does have its certain quirks and proper procedures to follow. So key terms uh, we're looking at here. Uh, gravity, force that pulls objects toward the center of the Earth. Mass is the amount of matter that an object is made of. This does not change with gravity. And then weight is the amount of gravity acting on an object. So we're talking about usually getting the mass of something. So while it may seem easy, just put it on the scale. Yes, but it's a bit more complicated than that. Uh, again, that's essentially what you're doing, but the details that you need to pay attention for will ensure more accurate results over time. So we want to take care of the balance. We want to make sure it's on a level surface. So a lot of balances will have a uh, kind of a bubble built into them. So you're able to tell whether they're um, on a level surface or not. Uh, this is important to ensure accuracy in the sensor, especially for digital balances. You want to keep it clean. Uh, this includes before, during, and after its use. And calibrate the balance. Most balances that you'll use in class um, are already calibrated, uh, but they typically need to go through a calibration process, at least initially, and then repeated every so often. And that, again, helps ensure the accuracy there. Balance basics, electronic balances need time to warm up before being used. Often this is not a very long time, but it can feel very long. Uh, sometimes they do a countdown until uh, they're ready to be used. Other times there is that required warm-up time. Especially with the more higher-end balances, they can take 5, sometimes 10, 15 minutes to warm up. You also want to know how to zero the balance. Uh, typically there will be an indicating uh, for that, but you always want to start with it reading uh, all zeros. You want to check that to be sure. Tearing the balance, it's called. Uh, after the balance warms up, make sure it reads zero. If it's not zero, uh, then make sure to zero it. Then place the weigh boat on the balance. When the scale settles to zero, uh, before adding the chosen substance. So what you're going to do is it reads zero, put your weigh boat on there, it's a little plastic dish, and then you're going to tear it, and that's going to cause it to read zero. Even though there's something on the balance, you're able to kind of get it to read zero so that you can easily know exactly how much whatever substance you're adding to that particular container. And depending on the degree of um, detail that you're looking for or the number of digits that your balance reads to will depend on how precise you have to be. With these more precise balances, you can see they're typically enclosed in some sort of plastic or uh, case to eliminate um, other movements of like wind currents that can kind of cause it to be difficult to get a consistent reading. Uh, lastly, balances generate a more accurate weight for larger samples. Understand the limitations of the equipment, a more precise balance is not necessarily better. So, one, two, three, just because you can read to four decimal places doesn't mean it's necessarily a better balance. Depends on the detail that you're looking for, and weighing something on the very end of any balance is not going to give you the most accurate. Uh, so, a lot of times we're looking at scaling that up or changing dilution rates or something like that to be able to get the most accurate and consistent reading possible.